Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 607. 607, and the topic today is Are you in a relationship rut or single stuckness? I'm going to break that apart and give you some added information shortly. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful, and high achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And my mantra for this year apparently showed up on Friday, which is um, my focus this year is about respect for women. So I'll be talking about more about that that soon. So being a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, that inspired these talks I've done for the last two plus years called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, or MFTM for short, which is why I've abbreviated them now, because there's a lot of typing every time. And um, the topic today, being episode number 607, is are you in a relationship, sorry, are you in in a relationship rut or single stuckness? I'm gonna speak to a couple of things about this because it was a couple of things that coalesced or should say collided in my conversations today. One of which is when you um, move into default behavior in your relationships, that's one piece I'm gonna talk about, just so you got a preview of what's coming and how to break that, and secondly, when you are unwilling to change or grow because you don't want to or you don't feel you can, which overlaps that previous one, but also talks about if you're single or in a relationship because it's both places this is relevant. In fact, I was on a, um, a friend of mine posted on her wall about this um, question, which I, which I talk, responded to just a sidebar slightly, <laughs> is that when you're somebody who's involved in the well, she put it like a transformation junkie. I talk about being uh, committed to the personal growth journey to grow and become better at being human beings, loving, open, heart-centered, et cetera, et cetera. Different label, different choices of languaging. But the, the, point I, the point that was in the dialogue was about how your stuff's gonna show up more for you when you're in a relationship than when you're single. That was one thing. The second thing is when you're definitely on this committed path, it's harder to stay in relationships if they don't change with you. So I might be able to bring that in as well. We'll see, I'm playing with three different spinning plates and we'll see if they overlap. So first of all, the relationship rut. And there's two levels to this. One level of this relationship rut is if you keep dating the same people again and again, that's one part of it. But the second part is, which I wanna get to first, flip those around, is being in a relationship and then defaulting to a certain way of being that you keep doing every time you're in a relationship, regardless of who you're with and you get comfortable or should say maybe even lazy and you don't keep the relationship as top of mind and i was reading a um actually it was a memory that popped up on facebook from a from a story i read years ago now five six years ago at least about this story about this man who was divorced from his wife not knowing that she was actually dying from cancer because he'd be so busy ignoring her now that's an extreme framing i don't want to use that as the model here but the point i want to make is that sometimes we get into default behavior where we don't actually listen to our partners. We don't actually open up to our partners or even know what's going on with them because we're so caught up in our own default behavior, that rut that I mentioned. So it's one thing. And I'm going to be really blunt. The simple answer is to listen. The simple answer is to inquire. The simple answer is to keep caring. And the thing about that is in relationships, we have this tendency as human beings, and not just not me included, because I've done this before myself, where being in a relationship it's always wonderful and exciting and nuanced and, and unknown at the beginning. But then when we get to know somebody, we get comfortable. And that comfortable is laziness. We don't put so much effort in once we get to know the people. You know, it's like the first few dates, you're dressed up in your best behavior, you take care of yourself, you put on the right colognes and the right dress, you have best manners, you're always be on, on your, you always got your, your eyes dotted and T's crossed. And then six months in a relationship, you're both sitting on the couch eating pizza with your, you know, in your underwear. I don't mean sexy underwear either, but you understand the paradigm, that shift that goes from focus, intention, and um, decision to make the relationship wonderful, and then once you've got it, you're kind of like, oh, I can relax now. That's not a good approach. Truthfully, if you want a healthy relationship that's growing and being a wonderful place to be, you want to keep treating it like it's a first date almost, or, well, third date, shall we say. Keeping your relationship as a fresh experience and keeping it new means you, one, become more attentive to your partner, and two, you become more participatory in the relationship. Way too many people, 
I've seen it happen so many times, get relaxed in the relationship where they don't care about their partnership or the relationship anymore. They're just com comfortable in that space. And it's a, it's a crying shame, to be blunt. Relationships, for me, are something that should be celebrated and excited and joyful, not just, okay, I've arrived, now I can put my feet up. So that's the relationship brought peace. The other part I want to talk to, which I mentioned briefly in passing, I've talked about this before, is if you are in a rut of choosing the same partnerships every single time, you may have a problem if it's not working for you. <laughs> the, the, the repeat cycle of relationship partnerships where you change faces, change bodies, change names, but the patterns don't go anywhere else because it's you in that relationship, that's a clue that maybe you want to get some help or get some insight into what's going on. Again, if this is not working for you. If you get what you want, great, love it, enjoy it. But for most people, when you have the same pattern show up, it's a limiting, negative, dysfunctional, painful, upsetting pattern, generally speaking, where you're being reminded or repeating something from history that's coming up again and again and again in your relationships. And to put it in simple terms, that is your history speaking. I'm not going to break it down here, but I'm going to put a link in, my, in the comments for a discovery session because if you're dealing with that, we need to talk. Because it, I should say, if you're dealing with that and you want to change it, we need to talk. If you don't want to change it, go right ahead. So that's the relationship piece. The single piece I want to throw in here is this stuckness where we don't think we, we can change. There are many people I know who are single who they want to have this amazing relationship, but they're not willing to put any effort into it or any um, willingness to change who they are, how they present or what they're about to find a new love. And I mean, some people, they're not willing to lose the weight, they're not willing to, get their, to, to clean up their hair, they're not willing to dress appropriately, they're not willing to put any effort into their appearance, let alone their internal state, to actually attract a healthy relationship. And I need to be blunt with you. If that's, one of you, if that's your style and you're single and you're not getting what you want, you might want to think about changing because if it's not working now, it's, it won't work in the future. The reality of being single is it's a great place to do your own work and to grow and become a better person. That was one of the things I talked about earlier with my friend. But it's not necessarily as, um, what's the word looking for? You're not usually as inspired when you're single as you are in a partnership because if your partner's going, excuse me, you need to get over this and work this out, you get motivated. But when you're single, the motivation isn't as strong. So when you're single, it's almost the best time to do the work because there's nobody else to worry about. At the same time, when you're single, it's almost harder to do because you don't have anybody else encouraging you. That's one reason why people work with coaches. If, you're, if you've done sports, you know what being with coaches, they continue to keep you on track, keep you encouraged. That's kind of what I do as a coach as well. So if you're somebody who's single, who wants to change and transform the way you are in relationships or the way you are in life itself, I highly recommend you seek out somebody who can help you get there because doing it on your own, as I said, is less easy to do than it is when you're in a relationship where you've got a partner nagging you to make some changes. Yes, nagging is usually where it gets to. So being in that rut or that stuckness is not a permanent condition. I think you got my point on that too. It really is a choice point, and this is the thing. We as human beings are actually constantly evolving because our cells and our bodies actually recycle completely in seven years. That was, that was our left field. Let me say that one again another way. <laughs> as human beings, every cell in our body recycles itself within seven years. Different parts of the body take longer, like bones take longer than skin. But we are always constantly evolving. So it's only our consciousness or our thinking, our thoughts of ourselves, our ego, that tends to try and stay the same. Why not keep up with your body? Why not grow and become more who you can be? And yes, there are people who choose to exercise and become healthy and fitter. There are people who choose to explore more of the world and become more world travelers than they were before. I actually have a friend of mine who's doing, she's planning to do 50 countries by the age of 50. And she's getting close to that. Like she wants to travel and get out in the world more, which is wonderful. Having a desire to grow and become more aware, awake, um, cosmopolitan even, <laughs> healthier, those are great things to do. But being single sometimes is hard to do that with. So again, if you are single, I recommend you get someone to support you with it if you can't do it yourself, whether it's an accountability partner, a mastermind group, or a coach. Because although through all three of those things will help you. Because again, doing your own is harder. That's why we get into that single uh, stuckness, because we don't necessarily grow faster on our own than we could with somebody else. No. And when you're in a relationship, again, as I go back to this and say this again, it's so tempting to think we've done it when we've got the relationship. Well, maybe it's a male thing. You know, maybe it's more of a male thing, but women do it too. When we get into a relationship, you go, I don't have to put the effort on now. I've got the, I've got, I've got the, part, the partner, the guy or the girl. I can relax now, put my feet up. I'm not going to dress up as nice. I'm going to be wearing sweats around the house all the time. I'm not going to bother. It's a shame to do that. 
if you put that much effort into getting the relationship, keep on the effort in to maintain that relationship. That's a that's a law. <laughs> it should be a law. So um, I'm listening. This has been a bit of a rant as well because I want to get some points on the table because I've talked about some of this stuff before. And if you watch my broadcast, you know that I'm adamant about you having a more healthy relationship with yourself and with each other. Um, it's time, if you haven't done it yet, to step up to that framework to actually understand that you can be a better partner to yourself and other people in your life, including romantic relationships. And if you're not doing that now, it's absolutely time you start. I'm just seeing if there's more to it. This is kind of, I want to get this out on the table. I'm, real, I'm, I'm feeling this is it because it's really, um, uh, hang on, say this. It's something that really is bugging me because I see people wasting their time when they're single, wasting their time in a relationship. And this is the thing that's my pet peeve, I guess, in which case it's on me to figure it out, which is why I'm doing this talk. When people are not choosing to enjoy themselves being single, to become a whole person, and I've done, I've done three talks about that, the last three talks before this, so that was this is 607, so 654, 604, 605, 606, we're all about being single. So if you are a single person, please watch this broadcast again, because they were useful. I think so anyway. <laughs> but also help people create amazing relationships, and that's my focus as well. So this discrepancy that I'm aware of is bugging me, so this is why I keep talking about it. That's why I've had 607 broadcasts to teach you stuff. If you haven't been watching my broadcast, time to start. And I'll give you the links to so find the replays. Um, and also, again, I'll put the link in the comments for the discovery session because I do offer some guidance, some, offer, some um, products and programs that can help you if you want to get the help. Because you have to choose in. It's not to me to do it for you. I'm not going to do that. That's up to you. So, replays. This is my Facebook Live, by the way. I do this every day on um, um, Facebook. I got stuck with that one. I do this every day on Facebook, um, and it goes on my personal page, which if you're not following me on Facebook, please follow my business, my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays are always more visible on my, my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author, as well as on my YouTube channel. So all of my replays get put onto my business page on Facebook and on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. I believe it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, I think. But look for messages from the masculine. That's my playlist. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And you can watch all my, re my replays in the playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Um, and thirdly, I have been loading these up slowly onto my podcast, which is on iTunes, which is called Messages from the Masculine. That's the name of the podcast. You can subscribe to that. And you get the audio versions if you want. So you download those and listen to them when you want. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this broadcast, your thoughts, insights, upsets, concerns, questions etc please put in the comments below and i'll respond when i sign off either here on facebook or on youtube and uh, again i'll put a link in the comments for support i hope it's been helpful to you maybe it's giving you maybe it's giving you a nudge or kicking the pants or at least some insight and if not then why are you watching no i appreciate you being here i will see you again tomorrow 5 p.m pacific time as usual and appreciate you being here live i look forward to seeing you again tomorrow take care bye oh hi sue welcome and thank you. You're welcome as well. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.